Welcome and thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Amanda Jabril. I'm a Portfolio Analyst at Tricom Funding. Tricom is pleased to introduce our Industry Insider webinar series. The purpose of our series is to share our expert knowledge and resources with our fellow staffing industry colleagues. Our presenter today is Hinda Chalou. Hinda is responsible for staffing industry analyst corporate marketing, product marketing, and product management. She joined the company in August of 2006 with more than 20 years experience managing marketing for information, research, and high technology products and services. As an alumnus of DataQuest, Inc. and Ginga Information Group, Inc., Hinda also brings tactical research services expertise to the company. Hinda also holds a bachelor's degree in business administration from CSU Hayward. The Epping Industry Analyst is a global advisor on contingent workforce. Known for its independent and objective insights, the company's proprietary research, award-winning content, data, support services, publications, and executive conferences, provides a competitive edge to decision makers who supply and buy temporary staffing. In addition to temporary staffing, staffing industry analysts also covers related staffing sectors. Founded in 1989, acquired by Crane Communications, Inc. in 2008, the company is headquartered in Mountain View, California, with offices in London, England. For more information, you can visit staffingindustry.com. For today's Industry Insider webinar series, Tinda will discuss why write a plan, what's included in your plan, step-by-step -step plan development, and social media plan metrics tools. By the end of the session, you'll have the tools you need to begin with a social media plan that ends in results. With that, I will turn the floor over to Hinda. Thank you, Amanda. Um, I appreciate the, the introduction, and I'm glad that so many of you have joined us on the call today. As Amanda said, what we're here to talk about today is writing a social media plan. This is Social Media 101, so uh, it's really how to get started and how to think about the process of social media. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them at any time through the Q&A box um, in WebEx, and I will try to answer your questions. Um, Amanda already gave you the um, background on staffing industry analysts. Uh, these are just a couple of our slides. Uh, we work with nearly 700 client organizations, both on the staffing side and those who buy uh, contingent labor. Um, the company has been around for more than 20 years, and um, you know it's been a great experience for me to work uh, with staffing industry analysts. This presentation. Um, was it's modified for this, but it was given at one of our conferences, and I'm reprising it here. And um, social media is, is an interesting thing. Um, I'm sure that many of you have a LinkedIn account or a Facebook account, um, and some of you and some of the folks in your company are probably using LinkedIn or Facebook or something else to help recruit people or help communicate about your businesses. But often what I have found when I've talked to people at our conferences um, is that many people don't take the time to write a social media plan. They don't even take the time to write a marketing plan. And so what we're going to talk about is why do you need to write a plan. Um, I'm going to step you through the process of writing a plan, talk about how to measure social media, and, and talk about Q&A. I will say that for those of you who are, run small businesses, social media is a great opportunity for you to reach out and communicate with a, a broad and diverse organization. And one of the keys to success is consistency, and, and we'll talk about that. So, you know, first off, let's talk about why you want to write a plan. And the first thing you have to think about is what do you want to achieve? What are you trying to do with social media? Are you trying to build better relationships? Are you trying to raise the awareness of your company? Are you trying to build website traffic? You have to really think about the things that you want to achieve in your business. 
And some of the slides that you'll see in this presentation, I, I actually pulled from staffing industry analysts social media plans so that you can get a sense of what I'm talking about when uh, I talk about what you want to achieve. So the next slide is some of the goals that staffing industry analysts had with, their, with our social media plan, which is one of the things that was really important to us is we wanted to reach people in communities that we don't reach in conventional ways. Um, I, I'm sure that many of you receive our, our emails and our postcards and other communications from us, and, and perhaps some of you are, in fact, corporate members. Um, but we really wanted to, to reach out to a diverse organization, uh, and, and we weren't necessarily reaching them with our own list. The other thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to increase visibility within our current communities. So while we may be reaching you, uh, we might not be reaching others of your staff, and so we wanted to improve our visibility. We also wanted to create greater interest in what staffing industry analysts does. We're a very niche business. We focus on contingent labor and only contingent labor. We're not in the general HR space. Um, and the other thing is we wanted to position ourselves as the leader in contingent uh, labor and the place to go for staffing information. And then, of course, we wanted to engage and delight our audience and, and challenge our audience on different levels. And so that was what we want to accomplish with our social media plan. So I hope that this gives you some ways to think about your social media plan and why you want to create the plan and the things that you want to achieve in that plan. So the next thing you have to think about is who's your audience and or your customer. And you have to think about it in very specific ways. Where does your audience come from? Are they hospitals? Are they financial services? Are they law firms? Are they in uh, biotech? Are they technology companies? You have to really think about where they come from because it matters when you're writing your social media plan where your audience comes from because you have to know where to be. And I know it's easy to be on Facebook, and I know it's easy to be on LinkedIn, but that isn't necessarily where you need to be in terms of, of social. You also think, need to think about the audience that you're trying to reach. Are you trying to reach the VP of HR? Are you trying to reach the director of recruitment? Are you trying to reach the director of procurement? Who specifically are, are you trying to reach? And again, what's important about that is where you're going to be. Because if you don't do this analysis, you're not going to know where your audience is going to be. And so that's why you need to sit down and think about who your audience is and who your customer is. And so, again, pulling a page out of Staffing Industry Analyst Plan, uh, our audiences are the buyers of staffing. They are our internal staff. They are the contingent labor in general. They are staffing companies. Their suppliers of staffing, their financial analysts and consultants, the media and the press. This is our audience, and all of these audience members are in different places. So let me give you a couple of examples of how we reach this audience through social media. So for our internal staff, we have a program called Yammer. Um, some of you may have heard about Yammer because they were in the news recently because Microsoft just purchased them. And Yammer is a social platform that we run internally where we can communicate various events and things along those lines uh, to all of our staff. And we have staff in London. We have staff in the Netherlands. We have staff in Chicago. We have staff, you know, sort of all over the country. And so not everybody's on the same time zone. And so by using Yammer, we can reach out to them in a different way than through email. Um, for the buyers of staffing and our staffing companies, uh, we reach out to people using Twitter, uh, and we communicate a lot with Twitter. We also have LinkedIn groups. And so we're in different places to communicate with the different audiences. So, again, some of what you need to do is profile your audience. Um, you need to think about the age of your customers, where they are in the world, what they read, what their gender is, what their uh, leisure activities are, and um, why do you need to think about this? Again, because it's really about 
where they are and how they use social media. And so just to bring the point back about Yammer, which was there, one of our analysts posted on Yammer that Facebook was going to create job boards. And one of our other staff members um, talked about Facebook and job boards, and she was somewhat emphatic about how um, she wouldn't look for a job on Facebook, um, that she uses LinkedIn as her professional networking, if you will, and that she uses Facebook as strictly personal. Now, that's because she's a particular demographic, and that's why she said that. Uh, I would argue that if you're trying to reach people in the um, their 20s, that they're more likely to be on Facebook than they are on LinkedIn. So that's why understanding the age of your customer and understanding the demographics is really important. Um, so two questions came up that I'll um, stop for a minute and, uh, and answer. So one was, uh, will the slides get emailed to the participants? And the answer is yes. And uh, the next one is, can you explain why you're using what I assume is Yammer, which is better than sending email, and what would be the advantage to inform your staff um, in this way? Um, the reason why is uh, we use Yammer versus email is that, so that we're not sending email to everybody in our staff, which you know sort of clogs up the, the, the servers and, and so on, and then people respond to all, and there's all this big email traffic. Uh, what Yammer does for us is it's one to many. It's a total social media, social networking platform. It's one to many. Somebody can post, and everybody can respond. Um, and not only can you post text, but you can post video, you can post pictures, you can post all of those types of things. And so you don't have this going back and forth with email. It's real time. It it's, um, exists. Um, you know, right there, and people can comment on it. So uh, moving along, so, you know, we did some analysis in terms of where staffing industry analyst audience were socially. And so we have our direct audiences and we have our indirect audiences. And so, you know, again, talking about our direct audiences, which are staffing companies and suppliers to staffing companies and buyers and our staff, um, so where are these people socially? So staffing companies are, are the broadest group in that people who work for staffing companies are on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on LinkedIn, and they also, a number of them have uh, blogs. And we'll talk about blogs in, in a minute. Um, suppliers to staffing companies largely are on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Buyers of staffing companies might be on Facebook, Personally, but professionally, they seem to be largely on LinkedIn, and our staff, as I mentioned, are Yammer, Facebook, and, and LinkedIn. And so you, you need to think about this uh, and where people are. Um, our indirect audiences, temporary workers, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on LinkedIn. But interestingly enough, uh, we did a temp survey um, earlier this year, and I believe, I'm quoting this number correctly, Less than 10% of all the temps said that they found their temporary job through social media. So there's, you know, sort of a schism of behavior versus where people are that you should be aware of. Um, investors and, and financial analysts are largely on LinkedIn. The media is all over the place. Um, they're on Facebook. They're on Twitter. They're on LinkedIn. They're on blogs. They're on Tumblr. There, there's so many places. Uh, where the media are. So this is part of the analysis that you have to do. You have to figure out where your audience is, and you have to communicate where they are in the way in which they want to be communicated. So that's very important. You also have to put your customers in a room and ask them some questions. Now, I, I think that this is something we all fail to do um, well in that we make assumptions that we know our customers and, and we do talk to our customers and your salespeople talk to the customers. But we 
sometimes miss asking our customers questions like, what are their business goals, and what are they trying to accomplish, and what's their timeline in trying to accomplish, you know, their goals. And why this is important is this is about the what you're going to communicate to them. So it's not only who you're going to communicate to, it's what you're going to communicate and where you're going to communicate it. So this is a, an important step in creating your social media plan. So when we went out and talked to our audiences, um, we learned that they're sort of broadcasters and receivers, and they're trying to accomplish a number of different things socially. So staffing companies, the recruiters are looking to source candidates. They're looking to build relationships. Uh, they're looking to be um, known as leaders. The staffing executives, what they're trying to accomplish socially is they're trying to get pulse on the market, uh, build brand awareness, give and receive information, build relationships. They want to cast a big net and expand their reach. Many of them are also trying to sell their company and attract event investors, and so that's what they're trying to do. Buyers are largely receivers. Um, they are um, largely not putting out a lot of information out into uh, the marketplace, but they are trying to get product information. They, too, are trying to get a pulse on the market. They, too, want to receive information specifically about legal and regulatory appliances, compliance. They also are trying to recruit, and some of them are even looking for a new job. So that's what they're trying to do. So I hope that this helps you uh, put together your plan. You also need to go back to basics and ask yourself some questions, which is, what's the business that you're in? What do you want to achieve? What are your goals? And who do you want to be when you grow up? And the reason why you want to do that is, you know, again, this is the who, what, where, when, why, and how. And, and, and this is about why are you doing what you're doing and how will social media improve that. And so that's why this is an important question to ask yourself. You also have to think about what channels do you currently use. Um, are you um, – do you have a website, and what are you using your website for? Um, do you do direct marketing? Do you do email? What other outreach programs uh, are you using? Do you call people? Do you have newsletters? So, again, let's talk about this a little bit, which is when you put together a plan like this, everything needs to be connected. And you can't do one thing without connecting it to the other things. Um, so, for example, if you have a, a website and you're doing a direct marketing campaign, you want to potentially drive people to your website. If you want to use a social media program in conjunction with that direct marketing campaign, you've got to have everything set up so that it works in conjunction with one another. These are not discrete events. If you're using email to also communicate about your direct marketing program, you also want to be able to have social links related to that. And so, again, you want everything to be interconnected with, with everything. Um, if you're phoning people and talking to them, you may want to point to something that's on your website or um, your Twitter feed or, or what you're doing. So I'm going to pause for a minute and ask anybody if they have any questions at this point before we go forward and if I'm making sense. All right. I didn't see any hands raised, so I'm going to um, move on from here. So when you think about staffing industry analyst channels, I, I wanted to give you a, a couple of examples, again, in terms of what we do. So first of all, many of you might receive our daily newsletter, which is this item right here. And um, one of the things that is on our daily news uh, are social wiz widgets, so that you have the ability to tweet the news if you want to tweet it. 
Uh, you also have the ability to um, post it to Facebook if that's something that, that you want to do. So you can take what we do and, and pass it on to your audience if that's interesting to you. Um, we also blog regularly. And so I want to talk about blogging in a minute. I'm just going to um, separate that out for a second. We send out a number of different brochures about our conferences and events. Uh, we also send out a number of e-blasts about our events and our reports. And we're also on LinkedIn to try to communicate uh, in LinkedIn groups. So I want to talk about blogging. Um, a lot of people don't think of blogging as, as social media, um, but blogging is. Because what makes social media work and what is social? And, and that is you're putting something out in the world and you allow people to comment and communicate uh, with you on that. And, and blogging is one of the easiest things that you can do. And if you take anything away from this presentation, one of the things I would suggest that you think about is, can I blog about something regularly that will position me and my company in a position of leadership? Because every one of you who's on this call today knows something special and unique. And that's what writing a blog is about, is communicating and positioning yourself as a leader about something that you know and enabling the conversation to go beyond just you. And that's really what social media is about, is giving people the opportunity to communicate about what you want to communicate. And, and that's the point of it, and, and have it be bigger than you. Now, the keys to success with blogging are regularity. You have to be, a, it's a commitment. You have to commit to writing a blog on a regular basis. And whether that is daily, weekly, monthly, people have to know that you're going to write it and that it's valuable enough. And you want to combine things. So if you're going to write a blog, you might want to post it on your website, and in addition to posting it on your website, you also might want to tweet it. In addition to tweet it, you also might want to post it under your LinkedIn profile. And in addition to that, you might want to attach it to Facebook. And so when we talk about those channels and where people are, you're sort of spreading it out so that people can see where you are and absorb the information and communicate with you where they want to communicate with you. So I hope that makes sense. Now, it's really important to understand what people are saying about you. And one of the ways that you can do that is look at social media. Um, I'm doing a, a panel as an aside um, at our healthcare staffing summit, and I have the um, social media person from Zappos on that panel, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with Zappos, but what Zappos does is they are basically an, an online site where you can buy shoes and clothing and other personal goods. And Zappos is the leader in using social media for customer service. And so when people are having an issue with Zappos, their customer service people get all on it in terms of social media. And one of the biggest ways that retail companies are going to use social media, they're beginning to use it now, but going in the future, is while you're in the store. So should you be shopping at Target, um, and Target knows that you're there, Target is going to be communicating with you socially. And so Customer service, particularly if you're a staffing company and using social media to deal with customer service issues, it is a really, really positive thing. Some advice about that, which is you want to take arguments offline, but it gives you the ability to see what people are saying about you. And so if you have a temp that's out there that has had a bad experience and has written about that, you want to reach out to that person. And, and find them and, and say, hey, I'd love to talk to you about this experience. You know, let's talk about this offline. Um, 
So you want to absolutely monitor what people are saying about you. For those of you who uh, work for larger companies, you might be aware of a website called Glassdoor.com. Uh, Glassdoor is a place where um, employees communicate about what it's like to work at your particular company. You might want to check out Glassdoor and see if there's any posts about there. And again, this is a way in which you can monitor what people are saying about you. You want to read staffing industry analysts information to see if there's any mention of what we're saying about you. Um, so you want to talk to people like Tricom Funding and, and see what they're saying about you. So this is all an important part of, of writing your plan is taking a pulse and understanding what people are saying about you. So some things to think about um, when you're putting together your social media plan is you really need to think about the size um, and the technical expertise of your staff. Social media, as I've mentioned, is not something that is once and done. It's a continuous effort. And if you don't have the staff to support you then and you want to do social media, then you need to get the staff um, on board who can support you. Now, often when I talk about this and I ask people who's helping them with their social media, often it's somebody's son or daughter or niece or nephew or, or something like that. And, you know, that's great, but really – you need to have somebody who is in your employ who understands this and can help you take the next step. And so that's something that's important to think about. The other thing that you need to think about is social media needs to be divided amongst your staff to have the greatest impact. And, you know, one of the debates that often happens is uh, I don't want my staff wasting, quote, unquote, their time on social media. Well, this is something that you have to think about and a paradox that, that you have to reconcile, which is your staff is on social media, whether you give them the opportunity to do that sitting at their computers at work or not, because the majority of your staff have smartphones, and they are connected socially. So you might as well just sort of bless it and create excuse, excuse me, a social media plan whereby they're communicating the messages that you want to be communicated socially. And so it's really important, <coughs> excuse me, to put together that plan and communicate out to the staff what you want um, to be communicated and who you want to communicate it and how you want it to be communicated. And then you really need to look about, look at what content you already have that can be used on social media sites already. So we talked about some of the channels that, that some of you have, and, and some of you do, in fact, write newsletters, and some of you do, in fact, write blogs, and some of you do, in fact, um, participate in webinars and things along those lines. And so social media is all about content and reusing that content and repurposing that content and creating content. And so you really need to think about what content you have, what content you need to create, where you're going to get that content, um, and on what channels that you're going to communicate that. So these are all things that are really important um, to, to think about uh, when you're putting together your social media plan. Now, the core part of corporate message, uh, corporate um, communications is what's your message. And so we've talked about things uh, regarding your audience, and we've talked about where they are, and we've talked about their demographics. Now you need to think about what do you want your audience to know about you? What's the message that you want to convey about your firm that's different than others in the market? What makes you special? And so when you think about that blogging or that tweet or that newsletter that you're going to, to communicate out into the world, what is it that you want your audience to know? And this is really important because there's a lot of staffing companies out there. There's a lot of companies that, that do what you do. And the key to success is to differentiate yourself among the rest. And so you want to be known for certain things. 
And so you have to think about that message and what is the specific thing that you want to be known for. And I would suggest that as you get this thing started, you want to start with a fairly narrow focus and then broaden out. And so if, as an example, you have an expert on your staff who knows something about IT recruiting and, and that's the thing that you are, then focus it about that and, and focus it um, about information that you want to give out to the, the prospects who are out there who could be potential temps for you um, as to why they want to work with you and what makes you different and get that message out to them. To the other people who you work with, the, the other suppliers and, and perhaps the MSP and DMSs that you might work with, you want to communicate why they should work with you and, and what makes you special. And it's all of this interconnected part of the world that, that you need to think about, but your core messages are really um, important. So I'm going to pause here and see if there are any questions about this thus far. So a, a question came in that says, what has been your experience with setting up this whole big plan? Are people outsourcing the initial setups and then doing the rest in-house? So I don't quite know how to answer this question, and so I'm going to do my best to, to do this. So can you outsource this? The answer is absolutely you can. Uh, and there are a number of companies who can help you with this. Um, you know, some people like um, Hilly Marketing is one company that comes to mind who I know has taken this on and has uh, worked with, with folks to outsource this. Um, Jim Lanzalotto uh, and his group uh, also does some of this work. So the answer is, Yes, you can outsource it. However, I would argue that it is really important for you to put together your plan and think through this on your own because nobody knows your business better than you. And so while you can engage consultants to help you with this, and there are some really great consultants out there who can help you with this, you know your business, and they don't. And Ultimately, you might put them on the hook for results, but really you're on the hook for, for the results, and you can't outsource results. And so you need to think about who your audience is and what business you're in and how much you're willing to commit to social media. And they can help you. They, they might be a great catalyst in terms of helping you put together um, this plan, and that might be the best way to work with them. What I'll say with my own experience in putting together these plans is this is not easy work. It takes time. It's a constant revisioning process. Um, you have to get buy-in from other leaders on your staff and, and from other people because if you don't have buy-in, it's not going to work. You have to make a commitment to do this. Uh, the results are not necessarily clear initially, and so you have to give it time. This is not something like, oh, we're going to try it for a week, or we're going to try it for a month, or we're going to try it for three months and see what happens. It, it doesn't work that way. This requires patience. It requires dedication. It requires follow-through, and you constantly have to get buy-in from your, your team to make this work. So I hope I've asked, answered that question sufficiently. So moving on, um, it, tracking data and information. So the great thing about social media versus other types of marketing is that you can track it. Um, there are all kinds of, of sites and places to go where you can track the information. And tracking it needs to be part of your plan because you have to have somebody to track it, and you have to have the tools to track it, and you have to understand what you're going to track, and that's based on your goals. And so I'm going to go back a bunch of slides to this slide right here 
which is what are you trying to achieve? And this has to be defined so that you can define your goals. And so as an example, if one of your goals with social media is to increase website traffic, well, then you have to know what your website traffic is now. And then you have to monitor it on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, to see where it's been uh, and see how it's changed based on your efforts with social media. If it's about um, creating new leads, well, then you have to have tracking mechanisms on your leads. And so if you're doing a campaign, one of the things that you might want to do is do a campaign just on Twitter. And so you know that the only way that people heard about this particular campaign was because you tweeted it. And so then you understand the effectiveness of your tweets. And we'll talk a little bit about some other ways of, of measurement. Um, get people to take an action. So if you're doing a, a campaign on Facebook, as an example, and what you want people to do on Facebook is fill out a survey, then you know that it came from Facebook and you have the ability to, to see it. So that's why understanding what you want to achieve is, is important so that you can measure it and keep track of it so that you know how well you're doing. So let's talk about different ways in which you can um, track your information. So first of all, um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Google Analytics, um, that's what this screen is from right here, uh, Google Analytics is, is free. Um, you have to have codes on your website uh, so that Google can um, find various pieces of information from your site, and it has to be tagged appropriately, and the people who are managing your website should be able to help you with that, and there are certainly other um, consultants who can help you with that, but Google is one way. Now, one of the things that I'll say about Google Analytics and, and other um, types of analytics is these are not absolute numbers, and because the Internet works in, in wild and mysterious ways, and many of us don't have big enough traction on our website. It, you know, it's not like we're Target or Amazon where we have millions of people coming to our website during the, the day. What you're looking for are trends and not absolute numbers. So that's something I'd like to uh, caution you about is, is, is don't think in terms of absolutes, but look at trends. So another thing that you can look at is uh, there's a website that's called Social Mention, and um, this is a way in which you can, we talked about, you know, what are people saying about you. Um, this is a place where you can find out what people are saying about you, um, you know, if it's been tweeted or on Facebook and, and so on. Social Mention picks up those types of things. If you want to... Um, look and see what happens in the Twitter world, uh, there's a website called TweetReach, and you can um, take a look and see what happens uh, with Twitter. Um, there's a site that's called Clout um, that, you know, tracks your influence in the world. And so that's what some of these tools are on these screens. So there's lots of different things um, that you can then measure and look at, and that needs to be part of your plan but it really needs to be based on what you want to achieve and what your goals are. So I'm finishing up this, this presentation, and so I want to communicate uh, a couple of things. As I said already, one of the most important things with putting after you put together your social media plan is to make a commitment to do the work. And it can't just be one person. It has to be other people because, as an example, you know, I am linked to a bunch of people, but my colleagues are linked to a bunch of other people. And so it's the creative, it's the masses that help get the social message out. And it's not just about me. It's about me being part of a greater group. Another thing to help you is think about creating an editorial calendar. 
think through the things that you want to communicate and plan them out over time. And that's a really important method of being successful with this. And so if you want to communicate about um, how you've won some awards or you want to communicate about what, um, you, you know, the recruiting that you do and, and the types of candidates that you want to recruit, you need to think about these things and, and put them in an editorial calendar and so you know when you want to write them, you know, how you're going to put them out there, um, and you're going to commit to doing it. And as I already talked about, you can start small. You can write a blog. You can commit to writing that blog regularly. You can post that blog on your website. You can tweet that blog. You can attach that to your LinkedIn site. And all of a sudden, you get a lot of traction. For those of you who haven't signed up for Twitter, um, sign up for Twitter. Follow people. You don't have to tweet anything, but follow people and, and get an understanding of, of how it works. Follow staffing industry analysts. Follow um, Exec Forum, which is our, our staffing Twitter. Um, there's lots of people um, and companies that you can follow on Twitter and, and see what people are saying. And, and that's a really easy way to, to start engaging and, and understand what's going on out there. I think that one of the things that, that social media and social networking uh, enable us to do is, is to have some fun and reach people in, in different ways. And, you know, you want to see what, what happens on, on Facebook, put a contest on Facebook. Um, update your audiences about the progress of, of the, the contest. Announce winners. Um, you know, do some fun and interesting things that you wouldn't otherwise do in sending out a postcard or calling people. Using polls and um, that type of um, outreach on uh, social media is a great way to, to collect information but also get feedback um, and, and you know, give people information. So you've done a poll, you've reached out to people, they've interacted, then you post the results of the poll. Um, and, and that's a fun and interesting way to, to communicate with people, and I'm sure that many of you have, have seen this. And, and as I mentioned before, you know, engage everybody in your company. Get buy-in. Get people to do this. Get people to work with you. And build upon success. Start small and build upon success. Um, this is not something that had happened overnight. So some tips for success. Um, one of the most important things is to be consistent. Make sure that the message reflects the brand and your goals and your audience. And, and be diligent about that and monitor what's out there and what your other staff members and colleagues are saying so that you maintain that consistency and that it does, in fact, reflect uh, the brands and goals. Another thing that's important is to be conversational. This is social. Um, and so you have to break down barriers and make sure that your blogs are conversational, make sure that your tweets are, are conversational. Um, it, it's completely fine to, um, you know, be inspirational or be confrontational and, and, or challenging. Um, you know, you really want to avoid confrontation in terms of the negative. Um, be an expert. Write about what you know. Provide information. Be sincere and honest. Um, if you've seen a problem that somebody's talked about it, um, Say that, you know, I understand and, and take it offline and, and make it clear and, um, you know, respond kindly. Don't get into public arguments. It's really, really important. Allow people to have their uh, opinions. It's totally fine. Um, answer questions clearly, clearly, but also take it offline. The other thing that's really important is, is to listen. Hear what people are saying to you or trying to communicate and adjust and change and adjust and change and measure and evaluate and change. Those are the really, really important things to having a, an important um, and well thought out of social media plan. Just some uh, resources that I wanted to leave you with today. Um, you know, obviously, Twitter, Facebook, we talked about uh, Glassdoor. Um, Twiler is, is a, a way in which you can um, see what's going on in, in terms of Twitter accounts, 
Google Analytics we talked about, Social Mention, LinkedIn. Um, B2B, which is a, a, a publication that uh, staffing industry analysts is owned by Crane Communications, and B2B uh, is a publication that one of the Crane organizations puts out. They, they do a lot about social media. Mashable is a, a great site that spends a lot of time talking about social media. Um, Chris Brogan is uh, a social media expert, and you might want to uh, take a look and see what, what Chris has to say. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody might have, and I appreciate you taking the time and joining me this morning. I hope this was very helpful to everyone. Thank you, Henda. And yes, um, please do submit any questions that you have, either using the chat feature or the Q&A section. And I will go ahead and open up a poll. So hopefully uh, you can provide us some of your feedback on today's webinar. It's um, great information for us to use as we prepare future webinars. And yes, um, as a reminder, we will be sending out um, the copy of the PowerPoint to anyone that has requested it. So I will email that to you uh, as soon as the webinar is done. I have a question that came in. Is there a template for creating a plan? There are a number of templates. Um, you can do some uh, searches on, on uh, Google. Um, we created a, a little template that, uh, Amanda, I'll send to you, and you can uh, send it out to people. It, it's a number of these things that I talked about today. Um, I'm happy to, to send that off to you, and you can send that out to people. But you can Google writing a social media plan, and you'll also find a, a number of different um, tools out there. Oh, wonderful. That's great. I will. I'll include that um, so everyone on the webinar today can get a copy of that plan. Uh, I do have that. another question that came in. Um, suggestions for conversations as opposed to informational. Suggestions are conversations. That's about your business, and, and so I, I don't know who asked the question, and I don't know what business that you're, you're in, but conversations are related to the, the business uh, that you're in and taking a, a position uh, in terms of the business that you're in. So going back to the example that I used, if you're an IT recruiting company, um, a conversation that you might want to start is um, – how do you transfer skills? So if you're a, a JavaScript programmer and you don't know Ruby on Rails, but you know that Ruby on Rails is really hot, um, how do you gain the skills for being a Ruby on Rails programmer? And so that's a, a great conversation to have because there's people out in your audience who can answer that question, and you can be the facilitator of that because a number of programmers want to know the answer to that question. And part of being a, a, a staffing company is, you know, to try to elevate the, the people who you work with. And some of those people who you're trying to elevate are, are some of the temps. So going out there and asking people questions like that um, is, is really is really important. Or uh, another question is, um, you know, I'm just recently graduated from college and I don't know how to get my start. So how do I get my start? How did people in your community get their start and, and reach out and create a conversation like that. So a couple of suggestions on that level. Wonderful. Did anyone else have any other questions? So I do have another one. Um, for staffing firms, is there one particular platform that's proven to be most effective in driving online traffic? I wish the answer was yes, um, but unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, there, there is nothing um, that's sort of a silver bullet, if you will. It goes back to putting together the, this plan and really understanding where your audience is and who you're trying to reach. If you're recruiting and you're trying to reach uh, programmers, then you know you might want to go down the Facebook uh, place because maybe you're trying to reach a bunch of 20-year-olds. 
if you're trying to reach marketing executives, LinkedIn is probably the place that you want to be. If you want to position yourself um, as a, a leader and, and you want to have great Google results, you may want to be on Google Plus because, oh, by the way, one of the things that Google is doing and how they are, um, you know, increasing results is citations on Google Plus, which we didn't, you know, spend time talking about. But, you know, so it depends on what your goal is, who you're trying to communicate with. Um, that really depends on where you're going to be. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for all the, the great questions that came in today. Um, we certainly appreciate your participation in today's webinar. If you have any other questions um, or comments, feel, please feel free to contact either Hinda or myself directly. Um, I will be sending out an email to all the participants with the social media plan information that Hinda is going to provide for us. Um, and everyone who asked for a copy of the PowerPoint, I will have that included as well. If you would like a copy of the recording, um, I can send that to you should you need it. We will also have it available on TRICOM's website at tricom.com slash resources. Um, thank you very much, Hinda, for sharing your information. Uh, I think you had a lot of um, very valuable information to share with our participants today. Um, if you um, are interested in any other future webinars, we do have a webinar each month, and please continue to watch for information on that. Um, with that being said, uh, I will go ahead and put up um, Hinda and myself contact information, which is our last slide here. So please do feel free to reach out to us. Thanks very much, Amanda. I appreciate the opportunity, and, and thanks, everybody, for your great questions.